Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and welcome to part four, the final part of my drawer building series. In this video, we're going to wrap up the drawer building process by adding the fronts. So you may notice that some of this video was filmed with a coat on and some of it was in a t-shirt. Just bear with me because I filmed these videos months apart. <laughs> Anyway, drawer fronts are very similar to cabinet doors in that they can be made a million different ways. So first, let's talk about the different styles and types of drawer fronts. Here are just a few examples of the types and styles that I've built in the past. For these cabinets that I built years ago, I made the drawer fronts the exact same way that I made the doors with like a shaker style frame and panel. One by threes for the frame and quarter inch plywood for the panel but I've also seen people use one by threes for the frame and then install a half inch plywood panel using pocket holes in the middle. And since those pocket holes are on the back side of the drawer front, honestly, that's a pretty convenient way to do it. There are obviously a lot of different ways to make a frame and panel drawer front. Another type of drawer front can be a solid wood or just plywood drawer front, basically just a flat panel. If you want to dress these up, you could also add some trim pieces to it like this. Now another kind of cheater's way of adding a drawer front would be to just glue and or nail trim pieces along the front of the drawer box. This is what I did here for my bathroom vanity. I simply glued one by boards around the sides to kind of fake a shaker style drawer front. Now, these aren't the only drawer front options. They're just some common ones. Basically, it's just important to note that not all drawer fronts are created equal. So first, you kind of need to know what you're working with. About 99% of the time, I use wood screws to install the drawer fronts through the inside of the drawer box. Here you can see this screw is the knob on the front, but these screws are what I used to install the front. Now, obviously in that very last example that I shared where I just glued trim around the front of the drawer box, I didn't use screws in that case. But most of the time, if I'm installing a solid drawer front, like a panel or a frame and panel, I like to use screws. A common question that I get is, do I use wood glue as well? Personally, I don't like to use wood glue on my drawer fronts unless I'm 100% absolutely sure I'm never going to adjust or replace the drawer front. If you're perfect and you never change your mind and you never make mistakes, go for it. But if you're anything like me and you change your mind a lot and are prone to making mistakes that may need adjustments later, I don't advise wood glue. Now, of course, there are some special cases like this example from a couple months ago where I did glue on the individual boards to make the drawer front for this project. But this was a special case and these boards were really thin and so I just used wood glue to attach them. So there are cases where wood glue is helpful, but in most cases, I don't use wood glue with my drawer fronts. Since I'm usually using wood screws to install my drawer fronts, it's important to take note of the screw length. You need to know the thickness of the front of the drawer box and the thickness of the drawer front that you're installing. You don't want a screw that's longer than the two pieces combined because then it'll just stick out the front. But you also want to make sure that it's long enough to go through the front of the drawer box and bite into the drawer front to hold it in place. Usually I'm using a three quarter inch thick plywood for the drawer box and three quarter inch material for the drawer front. So I like to use a one and a quarter inch long screw so it's long enough to go through both but not long enough that it'll stick out the front. By the way, I like to use pocket hole screws when installing my drawer fronts because the washer head prevents it from countersinking and driving too far, but it also pulls the drawer front nice and tight. Now a note about frame and panel doors. If you use quarter inch plywood for your panel inside of a frame and you build it like you would a door where the panel is kind of in the middle of the frame and not flush along the backside, you may want to consider adding a spacer block or a shim between the panel and the front of the drawer box. That way when you add your knob or your pull, it doesn't bow or flex in the panel. I would also suggest driving your screws through the front of the drawer box into the frame section of the drawer front and not the panel since the panel is only quarter inch thick. That said, if you're going to build a shaker style drawer front, I do recommend using half inch material for the panel or building it out of like three quarter and then just adding trim to fake a shaker style drawer front. 
In part one of this drawer building series, I mentioned that the general rule of thumb with drawer fronts is that there should be an eighth of an inch space between drawer fronts and if it's inset, an eighth of an inch gap between the front and any surrounding framing. I'll be honest with you, I just eyeball it. If the gaps look even, they're even. No one's coming over to your house to measure your drawer front gaps. But if you wanna be extra precise, you can certainly use spacer blocks. So here are three easy ways to position and attach your drawer fronts. The first method is basically just place and screw. So when I'm building my projects, a lot of times I'll wait to one of the last steps to attach the top panel. That way I have access to the inside of the cabinet, which makes it a lot easier to install the drawer fronts. So here, since I have a frame all the way around, I find it easiest just to place the front in here and get it where all of the gaps on all of the sides look pretty even. I'm just gonna hold this, pushing it back as tight as I can, and then I'm going to use one and a quarter inch wood screws through the inside of the drawer box. After I drive the first screw, I take a look here at the front, make sure nothing moved and adjust as needed. Then I'll drive the second screw. And that's the super quick and easy way to attach a drawer front. For these bottom drawers, it's a little bit different. I can eyeball the gaps, but it's a lot easier if all of the fronts are kind of in position to eyeball that all of the gaps are even at the same time. So if possible, I like to flip my project on its back so I can lay the fronts out. So I've eyeballed all my spacing here and I've got my drawers just laying here. Now I need to screw them in place. There's a couple ways I can do this. One of those ways is to remove the drawer above it so I can access the inside again and just basically do what I already did with the top drawer, just at a different angle. This time it's laid on its back instead of standing up. And I could remove this drawer and then work my way down the exact same way, just making sure to position these where I need them before I remove the drawer in front of it. Another option is to use a pilot hole to help you hold your drawer front in place while you screw it in from the inside. This method is really effective and works well for both inset and overlay drawer fronts too. For this way, you just need to go ahead and drill your pilot holes for the knobs or handles that you're planning to add to your drawer. Measure, mark, and drill the holes, then position the fronts where you want them and use screws to secure them through these pilot holes. Once you have the fronts kind of tacked in place, drive the screws from the inside and remove the screws through the pilot holes on the front. This is a great way to help you get your fronts in position and now you already have your pilot holes pre-drilled for your hardware. Now a similar method if you didn't wanna drill your pilot holes is to use double-sided tape to basically accomplish the same thing. Now Crazy Tape and Gorilla Glue both make a mounting tape. I'm sure there are other brands too, but they make a mounting tape that you can simply apply to the front of the drawer box and then position your drawer front where you want it. And that will hold it in place while you can drive the screws through the inside. This is obviously the same concept, but mounting tape works as well. Now, one last method that I'll show here is using the Craig drawer mounting jig. This jig is really handy, but the downside is that it can only be used with overlay drawer fronts. This is a brand new package, so I'm going to open it up and show you how it works. Always read the manual. All right, let's figure this out. Okay, so here's the deal. I don't actually have a drawer front to install. However, the drawer front on the bottom drawer of one of my shop cabinets was not installed with the proper spacing. Um, it's been driving me nuts for a while, so I thought I'll just demonstrate this and reattach it properly. So basically, this drawer mounting jig comes with two pieces. One piece mounts to the left side of the drawer and one piece mounts to the right side of the drawer. So these clamp in place. I should have loosened all of these knobs before I started filming. All 
Now the cool thing about these clamps here is that when I put my drawer front in them, well, hello, Boog. I can set them at the amount of overlay that I want and I can make sure that they're both equal. If I was installing new drawer fronts on a new project, it would probably be easiest to start at the bottom and work my way up. But since I'm installing the bottom drawer front on an existing cabinet, it is what it is. So we'll make do. But I'm gonna pull this out and use these shims. So now that I have eighth inch gaps between the drawer fronts, I can clamp this on, making sure that my overlay is the same on this side as it is on this side. And that wraps up the fourth and final part of our drawer building series, installing the drawer fronts. Now I wish that installing drawer fronts was a lot more straightforward and step-by-step -step than it is, but it just really depends on what kind of drawer front you're installing and what kind of project you're installing it onto. So I really hope that you found this video helpful and you can take these tips and tricks, I guess, and apply them in your own projects and situations. If you haven't checked out the other three parts of the drawer building series, be sure to head over and check those out. And if you would like a printable version of all four parts to take to the shop with you for easy reference, check out the printable drawer building guide that I have linked in the video description. I hope you enjoyed this series. I'm glad that we're finally wrapping it up. And if you wanna stay tuned for all of the upcoming projects and plans, be sure to subscribe to the channel and follow along. Thanks so much for watching friends. And until next time, happy building.